Yeah, this is a Jaguar uh, I Pace uh, that yep that has been uh, outfitted with our suite of um, our self driving system, all of our sensors, and everything that's been integrated with the vehicle uh, to make it uh, uh, to make it fully autonomous. Any particular reason you settled on the Jaguar I Pace as opposed to anything else? <laughs> Yeah, so Jaguar is a company I think that uh, you know kind of shares our vision of uh, of uh, L4 autonomy, and so we were very excited to partner with them and uh, in developing uh, this is you know the modifications to this vehicle is kind of the platform for uh, uh, for our autonomous vehicle. Um, uh, the other thing I think that you know makes this a perfect pairing for uh, Waymo's uh, autonomous suite um, is the fact that you know it's a premium. Uh, all electric SUV and is really just sort of you know incredibly well suited to the task of uh, being a, uh, a a ride hailing platform for uh, for L four driving in you know an urban environment. Um, yeah, you mentioned the sensor package. Can you walk us through which sensors have been added to the vehicle versus which ones? Or do you tap into any of them that are already there? Yeah, we don't tap into the, any of the sensors uh, 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 that are in the vehicle um, for the purposes of uh, self-driving. Um, I can talk a little bit about our, our sensor suite. Um, so we have four types of sensors, um, uh, three of them kind of visual sensors and the, the, the last one, an audio sensor. So on the visual side, uh, I think the one that uh, you know, people are most familiar with is camera, right? So camera um, uh, are there to offer, you know, kind of a, an extremely rich view of the environment. Uh, we have uh, more than 20 cameras on the vehicle and uh, uh, different styles of camera, uh, you know, ones that are better suited for long range, closer range, um, uh, some of them that are better for you know, seeing at night, things like that. Um, so uh, so that's camera. Um, camera is a passive sensor in that it relies on light from the sun or the environment or headlights and things like that. Um, uh, and so we also have a couple of active sensors. The first one is LiDAR. Uh, so LiDAR uh, sends out little, little points of light and then measures how long it takes for those to, uh, to come back. Um, and by doing so, it can figure out how far away those objects are. So that creates kind of this 3D structure of the world that we can understand. And you can imagine kind of how rich that becomes when you pair it with the pixel you've got from, from the cameras. Um, the third one is radar. Uh, and so uh, radar is really great at uh, doing things like seeing through fog or rain. Um, and so for weather, uh, it gives us, you know, almost like superhuman vision. Um, uh, and being able to see through those and is really, you know, critical for, uh, uh, for, you know, things like weather. Um, it also allows us, you know, to do things like, you know, see around corners and see kind of fast moving objects and let us anticipate those a little bit better. Um, and then the last one is, is audio and audio is kind of sometimes forgotten a little bit, but is really, really critical for driving in, you know, the urban canyons, uh, you know, that we're seeing around us, for instance, um, if there are emergency vehicles that might be approaching from around the corner, you can hear them long before you them. Uh, and so with our uh, external audio recorders, our ears, uh, 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 we're able to, you know, see, uh, we're able to, to perceive emergency vehicles, where they're coming from, whether they're approaching us or receding, um, and just make better decisions about how to, you know, stay out of their way and make sure that first responders are able to, you know, safely Thank get you. Thank you. We're in a few vehicle platforms that's actually taken that into account. I've <laughs> brought that up on a couple of occasions where binaural audio for that reason, emergency vehicles tends to be lacking. So thank you for adding that. Um, yeah, absolutely. Can you walk through where the sensors are located? Um, I'm not sure if you can <laughs> see them from your point of view, though. Uh, so I, I can I can see kind of the bottom of uh, of some of them above me, right? So so kind of the 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 bulk of the sensors are in um, uh, are in uh, this uh, this package that's mounted on the roof. Um, so including our, our long range uh, lidar uh, that's spinning uh, uh, spinning around the top. That's uh, a lidar that can see you know many football fields away, and you know is really very well suited for you know higher speed roads and things like that, or just you know seeing seeing things that are further away. It's also mounted very high on the vehicle, so we can often see over uh, other vehicles. We also have kind of a, an array of cameras uh, that are up there that are also kind of well-suited for that task. 
Um, but beyond that, especially, you know, to make sure that we can interact safely with um, uh, uh, with pedestrians, with vulnerable road users that might be very, very close to the vehicle, we have um, both LIDAR, we have LIDAR camera and radar that are kind of positioned at the edges of the vehicle um, so that we can see objects that are very, very close in uh, around the vehicle and make sure that we are, um, you know, kind of maneuvering safely around those. Um, so other than the audio system, which I do find fascinating, um, how do you see Waymo is differentiated from, say, um, other robo taxi services? Um, let's say Pony AI, Baidu, Tim, just to name a few. Yeah, absolutely. Um, well, I think right now the largest differentiator is that if you look at the front seat, there's no driver there. Right. Uh, so we are fully autonomous. Uh, we're fully autonomous in, um, you know, challenging urban environments in, you know, higher speed roads in suburbia on the freeway. Um, and so, you know, I'd say, first of all, the biggest differentiator is, you know, just the fact that the Waymo driver is in control um, uh, and that we are not relying on, um, you know, a uh, supervision in the dri uh, in the driver's seat to, to take over or anything like that. So I think that's, you know, the strongest differentiator is just kind of our, uh, uh, the, you know, the fact that we're, we're actually out there. We're actually um, uh, uh, serving, you know, uh, tens of thousands of trips a week. Uh, to to real users who who love the service, so you know I would say that's that that's obviously kind of the biggest differentiator. Um, but I think that there's a couple of other things that really kind of set us apart from you know just even other ride hailing providers. Um, the first thing uh, that that uh, you know I think we always like to lead off with is our tremendous safety record. Um, we have uh, you know both within our internal studies as well as studies that have been conducted by uh, third parties that have anal analyzed our data. Um, shows that we are significantly better than uh, than human drivers, even you know drivers that focus on ride hailing, and to the point that you know when we look statistically at our safety record uh, uh, over the miles that we've driven, uh, we have prevented you know on the order of you know twenty five or even more uh, injury causing uh, collisions, right? Prevented them, right? Or or just not had them, and like to me that is just such an incredibly powerful stat when you think about it. That's 25 people, you know, who who weren't injured, who didn't have to go to the hospital, who are, you know, still able to, to take care of their kids who aren't in pain, right? Because of, um, you know, the, the, the impact of, of, um, of vehicle collisions and like, and so that's the thing I think that, that brings me to work every day and that I'm, I'm really most proud of. Um, beyond that, um, we're here in a Jaguar. This is a premium service. Um, uh, uh, I, you know, I could be sitting in this car and I'd have it entirely to myself. Uh, there isn't a driver who's listening in on, you know, any confidential or, or romantic or sensitive conversation that I might be having. If I want to fall asleep in the backseat and, you know, not even worry if I'm snoring, uh, then, you know, I've got that opportunity. This is really my space. Um, and, um, uh, and so, you know, I think that, you know, the customizability of, uh, of the vehicle, because it's my space, um, the premium service, obviously our safety record. Uh, and the fact that we don't have a driver behind the wheel, I think those are really the things that set apart Waymo from, you know, any other ride hailing service, autonomous or not. Interesting. Um, so you mentioned like 10,000 something rides per week. How many vehicles do you have in the fleet right now? Yeah, ten, tens of thousands uh, of, uh, of rides per week. Um, we don't share specific numbers, but, you know, in the hundreds in San Francisco, uh, in the hundreds in Phoenix, um, and, you know, more in... Um, uh, in Los Angeles and Austin. Those are the four cities that we are fully autonomous uh, in. Uh, no supervised uh, drivers behind the wheel goal, be, behind the wheel for the vehicles that are in uh, uh, that are that are conducting the Waymo One service. Um, uh, beyond that, we have um, vehicles that have uh, gone on what we call Waymo road trips uh, to 25 more cities. Um, uh, that uh, you know we've we've brought them there to. Uh, do a couple of things. Uh, first of all, uh, drive around and understand how those other cities, you know, might be a little bit different than the cities that we're questions in. Questions on that coming up. Um, uh, some of those cities have different <laughs> questions on that coming up. That? Go ahead. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Great. 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 Um, and so, um, uh, and so, yeah. So ma many other vehicles that uh, uh, that we you know, we've taken on road trips and and uh, and used to. Uh, to to get more data for our engineering teams and to be able to um, you know introduce people to you know what an autonomous vehicle looks like to kind of plant the seeds in their minds of what the future of transportation okay. looks like. Okay. Um, yeah. So leading into that, like you mentioned, the four cities; those are typically dry, sunny areas. Um, how do the Waymo vehicles handle, say, rain, heavy rains, uh, or snow, God forbid, snow? 
Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, uh, just because, you know, Phoenix, San Francisco, L.A. are typically dry and sunny um, doesn't mean that they don't have their fair share of pretty extreme weather. Um, uh, March of last year in San Francisco brought some very extreme storms, uh, uh, you know, high winds, a, a ton of rain. Um, and, you know, we were thrilled to be able to keep our service up and running um, through uh, through all of that, which was, you know, really just very exciting to um, uh, to have established kind of the proof point on being able to um, uh, on being able to continue to operate in those weather uh, in those types of weather. Um, Phoenix as well um, has. Um, uh, you know, things like dust storms and, you know, its own extreme rain kind of during the monsoon season there. Um, and so, um, and so we are, you know, very proud as, you know, as I mentioned, to be able to get to the point where we can handle basically all kinds of weather in all of the cities that we're in. Um, but that being said, you know, we can't yet handle all kinds of weather. Um, and so I kind of mentioned the road trip point a little bit earlier, uh, just this winter, we, um, uh, brought our vehicles out to Buffalo uh, to be able to experience some of the snow there and to be able to collect uh, some data on what that looks like. Uh, uh, previously, we brought them to New York kind of for the same reason. And so that really gave us an opportunity to collect additional data in those environments and um, be able to tackle those, uh, you know, in the future. Uh, okay. What would you say to someone who is apprehensive or even resistant to an autonomous vehicle? Like if you're trying to get them in the vehicle, how would you encourage that or alleviate some of their fears? You know, uh, the first thing that I would say is I absolutely understand. Um, it is, uh, it is quite an experience. Uh, I, you know, everybody remembers the first drive, uh, that they had, uh, in a, uh, in a fully autonomous Waymo and, you know, just looking out at the front seat here and seeing the steering wheel, you know, kind of move by itself. Um, uh, I absolutely understand the apprehension. Um, uh, going back a hundred years ago, People had that same app apprehension when uh, people removed uh, elevator operators, right, who, who controlled the elevator to move up and down. Um, and I think that, you know, it's it's always, um, uh, you know, understandable to have an apprehension when you see uh, new technology. But one thing that I will say is that for all of the people that get in the car and uh, and hit start ride and watch it start moving, the first 30 seconds are absolutely thrilling. And then they start to settle in and feel that, you know, not only does this feel, uh, uh, you know, very human-like, but it feels like one of the most, you know, competent, safest drivers uh, that they've ever experienced. And so very, very rapidly, and I, I've, I've done this with, you know, probably dozens of people, very, very rapidly, they gain, uh, you know, kind of this extreme level of comfort with the technology and, you know, almost unilaterally, they end up loving it. Um, and so, yeah, to that person, I would say, you know, I understand but the technology has matured to the point that everybody should give it a try. Uh, and when we see that people give it a try, they just want to come back and, and they just want to experience it again. Um, since you're about the destination, could you walk us through the process of like how you would hail a cab, what the, the fares are, what's the overall user experience like? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so uh, we, have, uh, uh, we have an app. Uh, it's in the, the App Store on, on, on Apple and the Play Store on uh on, uh, on Android. Um, and essentially, uh, for a user that wanted to experience the Waymo One service, they would go and download uh, that app, they would sign up. Um, and then uh, as they get into any of our uh, service territories, they would be able to, uh, to hail a Waymo vehicle. Um, uh, as they kind of queue it up to hail, uh, they need to uh, select kind of the destination that they want to go to. Um, the app will ask you to confirm uh, kind of both your, your pickup and your drop-off location. And then it'll give you an estimated time until you're picked up and an estimated time of, um, of your arrival. Um, something that I think, you know, you talked about differentiators with other ride-hailing services. Um, because we have all of the vehicle supply kind of under our control. I think that we're able to offer people a lot more surety about, you know, the vehicles that are, you know, are being assigned to them and things like that. You know, individual Waymo vehicle is, you know, not necessarily going to cancel just because, you know, they want to go on their lunch break, for instance. Um, uh, at that point, you know, the, the vehicle shows up. Um, uh, you have um, the, you know, the, the opportunity to unlock the, uh, the doors uh, with your app so that it can verify that it's you. Uh, you get in, you put on your seatbelt, uh, and then there's a button on the display here that says start ride. You press that button and off you go. Then as you get closer to your destination, you get the warning, you know, like just we heard that your destination is getting close. Remember to take all of your, you know, objects with you. Uh, get out, close the door, 
uh, and the vehicle goes off on its way to, to pick up the next user. Okay. Um, are there any options for ride sharing? Like maybe you and someone else are in the same general direction. Um, is there a way to say, yeah, I'm okay with another stranger in the vehicle? Yeah, right now, um, uh, right now we don't do that. Um, that, that is something that we're, uh, that we're exploring. Um, I think right now, one of the things that our users really love is that it's, uh, it's their own uh, environment, right? It's their own car. Um, and so that's something that, you know, we've really been building on. Uh, that being said, at the, you know, uh, uh, at the right time, I think we'll look out for opportunities for uh, doing things like ride pooling and, and sharing those because, you know, just because of the efficiency that it offers and, um, uh, you know, maybe cost savings opportunities also for our users. Um, given an EV, how do you manage um, range? Um, are you taking, you're probably monitoring you know, battery status and whatnot, and then does the vehicle have to, like, return home to get charged or something like that? Yeah, we have, um, so we have, uh, you know, various hubs and depots and things like that positioned around the cities and uh, that, that we operate in, um, and uh, there is logic that's running on the vehicle that monitors the battery percentage and kind of the, the available range uh, that's left, um, and then, you know, with plenty of time so that they don't get stuck out there, uh, will return to, you know, a charger that gets, you know, allocated to each vehicle. Um, and then it's charged for, you know, as long as it needs to be able to, uh, uh, to go out and, you know, serve, you know, more users, more trips. Um, and actually, you know, the process for doing this, it's, it's one of those things where, you know, in order to operate efficiently, um, uh, even kind of building up a super efficient process for figuring out when to charge, how long to charge, what charger to use, um, and things like that is, you know, yet kind of another, you know, challenge that we had to overcome and, and a real opportunity for kind of fleet level efficiency as we, um, as we make sure that we're, um, uh, you know, sending out the right vehicle to the right part of the city, bringing it back at the right time. Okay. Et That's all interesting. Um, I think it's about all the time we have for today, but we'll definitely want to dive more into technical details on a separate call. Um, probably the Q and a session coming up, but thank you so much for taking the time to do this interview and for the demo. I'm, Definitely thoroughly impressed with what I saw over your shoulder <laughs> this whole time. Yeah, absolutely. Well, uh, look, thank you for the opportunity to answer some of these questions. I think what we're really excited about is helping people to understand this technology, um, uh, even if it's you know over a video, um, but uh, most excited about giving people the opportunity to experience it for themselves because that's really when the magic happens. So, um, so thank you for the time and, and thanks for the opportunity to talk a little bit about Waymo.